congratulations on this incredible, Thank remarkable you. film. I can't think of any film that has dared to do what you've done here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so it, it's a continuous shot, or yes. meant to be a continuous shot. Yeah. So you have all the action going boom, 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 boom. Heavy action. Yes. Lots of speed yep. going through. Not a lot of verbiage. I just can't imagine. How did you have to sort of retrain your mind? Um, massively, massively. You have to kind of throw out everything you know about a traditional script and start again. In fact, when Sam first told me it was all going to be one shot and it was all going to be real time, I remember, well, he told me this and then he hung up the phone on me. <laughs> And I was sort of just left bewildered in my living room, like, I couldn't have heard that, that correctly. That can't be. Um, and I texted him, he was like, no, no, that, that was right, see you Tuesday. Like, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I remember Google, the very first thing I did, I was like, I googled one-shot movie scripts, and I couldn't find one. <laughs> so I had no idea what the script was even going to look like, and we kind of had to just sort of, like, forge a new path and, and create it as no we kidding. went along. But um, there are many, many challenges in writing a one-shot film. And it was so successful. Thank I mean, you. It, That's it could lovely. have gone, you know, pear-shaped, but well, yeah. Boy. Well, actually, the funny thing was, Sam and I didn't know if it was going to work when we sat down to write it. Oh, really? So we, we did it on spec. We did it. No one paid us to do it because we were not convinced that the idea we could pull it off. Um, and so the script was the proof of concept that this movie would work. And so there was a bit of pressure riding on it. Wow. So I had to pay my mortgage. <laughs> well done, and you've really created something that's so out of the box thank so you. unique thank you so much uh there's not a lot of dialogue in no, the film no. very spare yeah so so much had to be said with so the lovely. actions yeah. and the camera movement yes so how that's something new for a writer to yeah have to well definitely and actually the script the very first script that, that we did was still very kind of sparse on dialogue because we knew well it's a story that's set in real time in reality and how yeah. often do you wake up with a friend and go oh how is your wife who um is this many years old and you're several children you know you don't you don't have those conversations so right. exposition was so exposed um and we had to be very clever and calculated about how we deliver it um and so in the script we worked really oh. hard at that um but then yes. of course we did six months of rehearsals with George and Dean, with Roger Deakins, with Dennis Gassner. And what we all realized, I think, on the first day was how much of a collaboration this was gonna to need to be, how everyone needed to work in harmony and in sync. Yeah, and they told me that you would have 500 people on the set yes. on a day yeah. and do a really complicated scene. Yeah. For instance, the running with the live explosives yeah, behind. Yeah. Oh, that was, I mean, that was one of my favorite days on set. We had, we had sort of, the very first time we had ran that scene, was actually during like one of the early rehearsals, and believe it or not, um, George ran the thing, and and I and several other like assistants, back, like not background extras, but like basically all the camera department um, locations, we ran as if we were the soldiers to give an idea of pacing, um, and that was it was very much like it was always collaborative, it was always a team effort, but everything had to be done so many times in rehearsals before we could evolve the oh. story we wanted to tell um with the camera with the lighting with the the action um and so yeah it was it was a constant battle of like trying to get precision trying to get emotion uh and it was like choreography with the camera with the actors with the set it was it was wild to watch well one of the impressions that i had is that in many ways because of the way you made it it feels truer than almost any other film I've seen. Yeah, well that was... Because you're there. Well, you're that's running it. just in front of him. Yeah. Well, that was it. That was the, the whole point of making the film in this way was not, hey, look how cool we are and look what we can do with the camera. And Roger will be the first person to say to you that was never... He wouldn't have right. taken the job if that was it. The point was to tell the story of the Great War. And I can't write a script in which you care about six million men dying in the mud, but I can write a script in which you care about a few men dying in the mud. And so from that, hopefully the audience could scale it up. But the very first moment Sam and I sat down, we always knew this was going to be character driven. And in a way, I had this mantra that it, it should feel like 115 minutes in someone else's life. Because yeah, I knew that does. going in, and that, and that was what it was. It was meant to be pure escapism. It was meant to give you a, a tiny keyhole window into what men went through in that horrible war. That horrible war, that's right. Um, thank goodness we don't fight wars like that so much anymore. Thank God. I mean, and I think that's one of the real reasons to learn about the First World War. To learn about any war really is, 
only by understanding your past can you avoid repeating catastrophe like that. And it was it was human failure that led to, you know, so many young boys dying, an entire generation lost. And that again is what another great reason for the existence of 1917 is because it's another story that we now know yeah. in comparison to the stories that we lost. Well, exactly. And I think, you know, you don't need to know anything about the First World War to go and sit and watch this. You don't, you don't need to know even when the First World War started or ended. You only just need to kind of want to go and experience, just want to sit down and be transported right. somewhere else right. for, for half, man, well, 90 minutes. Can't remember the exact runtime. <laughs> that, that's all you need to know. Um, but in it, you can learn a bit about the war, but it's not a history lesson. We were never trying to make you eat your peas. We just wanted to say, hey, this is what happened, and, and you should understand what these men went through. Yeah, these boys. What exactly. these boys Well, went they were through. children. But, you know, it wasn't meant as an educational thing, but no. boy, did I learn about the trenches. Oh, I've never yeah. seen them look so realistic. Uh, yeah, I mean, Nightmarish. Well, we, did, we did huge, huge amounts of research. I mean, it, I was a massive history buff, like a real nerd, and I thought I knew a lot about the war, but <laughs> I remember sitting down with military advisors and they would tell us how they had one-way systems in the trenches, so they'd get up and down trenches and everything like that. I mean, they That's were, right. They were they tiny cities. Wrong yeah, way. Yeah, you see it. They were tiny cities um, that were built and they had street names and everything like that, and actually a lot of the, the men who dug the trenches got to name the streets, so you have... Sucky Hall Street is one of the names of the trenches oh in the film, and that's from Glasgow, where I grew up, because it was dug by the it was dug by a regiment from Glasgow. Wow. So it was, you, you, there's so many kind of tangible aspects to history in the film that we really try to be truthful with. And also the no man's land. No man's wow. land. Wow, I've never seen it depicted that like no. that. So I mean, freaky I, real. Uh, it was, you know, I I've researched this. I'd read about the First World War since I was, you know, shorter than now, even shorter than this. <laughs> um, and I'd researched it massively. I'd gone to France. I'd, you know, I'd. I'd I'd walked kind of a hundred years after No Man's Land. I'd seen all the pictures. And I remember the first morning I went to No Man's Land when we'd constructed the set and we were still in rehearsals. And I was out there early, I was alone and a mist was hanging and it was like time travel. It, you couldn't see anything else. It was this airfield outside London, but the mist stopped you seeing anything, any of the roads. And it was, it was, it was like being, it's like I fell through a hundred years of history. Man, what a movie, congratulations. Thank you so much, very kind Thank of you. Thank you.